Okay, folks. So, uh, today I'm going to talk about chapter six. Chapter six is the public sector. Uh, basically, they look at the role of the government. So, uh, public sector. <clears throat> and when we talk about the role of the government, uh, the book kind of like uh, divides it into two. Uh, one is the economic role of the government, uh, which is really not that uh, interesting. And the other one is the political role of the government. And that's when we're going to talk about redistribution of income. And obviously, redistribution of income is done via taxes. So basically, this chapter, we're really going to focus on the types of taxes that there are uh, how many possible uh, taxes can we have? And we actually, in the U.S., we have all the possible types of taxes that there can be. So uh, we're going to take a look at them. So uh, let's start from the beginning. Uh, so uh, role of the government. And like I said, there's economic and there's political. And I'm going to give you just, just a brief uh, description of the economic role. I'm not going to go into details because uh, there's not much to explain to it. it it's kind of like, like a history thing. You know, you, there it is, you know. Uh, so let's talk about the economic role. <clears throat> And uh, probably the, the most important economic role of the government is to provide for a stable legal system. Uh, that's, that's the most important one. You know, if, if you have a stable legal system, then you can have uh, an opportunity for the economy to prosper. If you don't have a stable legal, legal system, then the economy is going to struggle. Uh, I can tell you that after the fall of communism, a lot of countries, including Romania, which I know a little bit more about, uh, a lot of countries over there, they had a, a difficulty. They, they, they had a lot of difficulty with their economies. And the main reason why they had a lot of difficulties is because they did not provide a stable legal system. There was a lot of corruption. And people were not willing to invest so not only were they not able to attract uh, financial investment from abroad, uh, but even financial investment from within was fleeing. Instead of investing in their own country, they would much rather invest elsewhere because they were not sure what was going to happen legally. It could be confiscated. It could be you know, taxed away. Who knows? So providing a stable legal system. Uh, providing public goods. The highway system, national defense, those are examples of public goods. Uh, other things would be uh, promote competition. And uh, you're going to see that uh, by promoting competition, they're actually promoting employment. Because uh, when, when we talk about co competitive systems or non-competitive system, uh, usually non-competitive system will see higher prices. And the way they see higher prices is by limiting the supply. So if they supply less, they are going to be able to charge more. Well. If they supply less, that means that they're not going to employ as many people as they would otherwise do. So by promoting competition, you're in effect uh, promoting employment. <clears throat> and the book actually mentions one more role of the government, I'm not going to get into it, is to um, uh, correct for externalities. Uh, I'm not going to get into it, but an externality is something that impacts 
third parties. Uh, so, so there's an uh, economic activity that has an impact on third parties, uh, such as uh, an example of bad externality would be pollution. Well, uh, you are being affected because you breathe in the bad air that is being polluted by a factory, but you have absolutely nothing to do with that factory. You don't work there, you are not a stockholder, you, you have absolutely nothing to do with it, but they are impacting your health. So a third party, you, who have nothing to do with the factory are being impacted. Uh, so the government is supposed to protect against bad, bad externalities and promote good externalities. There are also good externalities where there's an economic activity that impacts a third party in a positive way. They have nothing to do with this uh, activity. However, uh, they are somehow impacted in a positive way. An example would be, imagine that the, uh, the, the city of San Diego wants to build some uh, recreational parks and, and, and uh, athletic fields in order to get kids to be in better shape, to, uh, to promote sports and promote better health. And what happened is the communities also benefit because there's less uh, uh, mischief going on, uh, you know, because kids are no longer doing all kinds of bad things, but they are doing sports or stuff like that. So, uh, so the community benefits without actually being part of uh, this uh, uh, economic activity. Okay, so uh, let's get over the economic role and let's talk about political role. We're gonna talk about taxes because that's what you're gonna see on the test. <clears throat> so like I said, um, we're gonna have redistribution of income and this redistribution of income is gonna take place via taxes. So we're gonna talk about, well, what kind of taxes can we have? And there are only three basic types of taxes. Taxes can be progressive, they can be proportional, or they can be regressive. Okay. And uh, we in the US, uh, we have all three types of taxes. We have progressive taxes, we have proportional taxes, and we also have regressive taxes. And we're gonna take a look at all three of them. Okay, so let's start with the easiest one, the one that it's the most straightforward, and that's gonna be the proportional tax. Uh, the proportional tax is a tax that everybody pays at the same rate, regardless of their income. So uh, with a proportional tax, so I'm taking this one first, with a proportional tax, it doesn't matter what the income is, everybody pays a certain percentage, let's say 10%. It doesn't mean that everybody pays the same, uh, it means that everybody pays the same rate. So uh, obviously you can see that, uh, uh, you know, it, it's not everybody pays $10,000 or $1,000, you know, it depends, it depends on uh, the, how much you make. <clears throat> uh, and every, every, every other election, I, I gotta be honest, I haven't heard this lately, but uh, in the past, in the past when there was a presidential election, man, this is many, many years ago, uh, you would always have one or two candidates uh, coming up with the idea of changing our income tax system that we have presently in the US to a uh, proportional tax. Uh, and, and they would say, well, how come? Because it's fair. Everybody pays the same rate. Everybody pays 10% or 20% or 30%, whatever rate 
they decided to have. Uh, <clears throat> any ideas, folks, who would benefit from switching our income tax system to a proportional system? The wealthy? Yes, absolutely. The wealthy would benefit a great deal. Uh, I haven't heard that idea in a long time. I, I don't think that uh, <clears throat> there are any more people that are thinking about it. Uh, that basically, if, if they would change the tax system to a proportional, the income uh, tax system to a proportional, uh, the revenues uh, in terms of how much uh, revenues the government would take in would drop considerably. I mean, there would be a lot of changes that would take place. Not only a lot of programs that would disappear, uh, but probably also a lot of people in the military uh, no longer having jobs over there because they're not, not, not going to be any money to pay them. Uh, so a, a lot of cuts would have to take place. So uh, this probably, most likely it's not going to happen. Okay. Uh, can anybody give me an example of uh, a tax where it doesn't matter what your income is, everybody pays the same rate? Groceries? Yeah. Uh, uh, what tax did you say? I'm sorry. Oh, like grocery taxes? Yeah, 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 exactly. The sales tax, exactly. Uh, they don't ask you how much money you make. Uh, so we can figure out how much you're going to have to pay in taxes. Now, everybody pays the same, whether you are a billionaire or you don't make any money whatsoever. So uh, everybody pays the same rate. Uh, that would be an example of a proportional tax. Now, <clears throat> Uh, there have been people who have proposed that we move our income tax system from the way that we have it, and I'll show it how, how we have it, to a national sales tax. So imagine that we no longer have income taxes. We're no longer going to have to file any forms with the IRS because every time we go to the grocery stores, we're going to pay a national sales tax. Uh, well, <clears throat> that, uh, that's probably not going to fly. Uh, th the reason why some economists were in favor of this national sales tax is because they wanted to encourage saving. Uh, people don't save enough. Well, guess what? If we do away with the income tax and we move it to a national sales tax, uh, guess what people will do in order to avoid paying taxes? They're not gonna spend money. They're not gonna go out and spend money because they wanna avoid paying taxes. So uh, it would be an encouraging factor uh, towards uh, saving more money. Uh, the problem with that is the problem with having a national sales tax is this. Uh, look, if, if, if you make, let's say you live in San Diego and you earn $40,000, that's your income. Well, chances are you're going to have to spend just about the whole $40,000 in order to live here in San Diego. That means that you're going to be taxed on 100% of your income. On the other hand, if you live in San Diego and you have an income of $2 million, well, that means that you probably you don't need to spend the whole $2 million in order to live here in San Diego. You may spend only $1 million, which means that you would be taxed on only 50% of your income. So from this point of view, uh, even though uh, it's, it's the same rate, uh, it would tax people differently depending on their incomes. Some people will have to pay taxes on 100% of their income and some people will pay taxes on only 50% or even less than that. So uh, from that perspective, it would be regressive. Uh, just to give you an example of <clears throat> a tax that everybody pays the same, but it's kind of regressive in nature in that the wealthier, they're not that affected by it, but if you have lower income, you are affected more by it. 
uh, look, when you go to the gas station, every time you go to the gas station, uh, out of that $4 or $3.50 or $3, whatever the price of gas is, $1 is taxes. And everybody pays the same dollar in taxes. But on the other hand, if your income is $50,000, that dollar is gonna affect you one way. If your income is $250,000, then that dollar is gonna impact in a different way. So you see the, uh, the regressive nature of those taxes. Okay, <clears throat> so we're done with the proportional tax, one rate for everybody. Let's go to the progressive tax that is represented by our income taxes. Oh, and by the way, uh, just just an FYI, uh, some of those people who were uh, in favor of a uh, national sales tax, um, they are actually copying uh, the European system because in Europe uh, they have a national sales tax which is on top of uh, the income tax. So they have income tax, and then whenever you go buy something, uh, you're gonna pay a national sales tax. Uh, anybody, if you've been to Europe and you make a rather major purchase, something that's expensive, and uh, then make sure that at, at the airport, you turn in a piece of paper, and you're gonna be returned this national sales tax because it's not your business to pay their national sales tax and you're gonna get your money back. So you pay it when you buy the good and then they're gonna mail it back to you, to the States. Okay, all right, folks. Let's talk about a progressive tax. And our income tax is an example of a progressive tax. So a progressive tax is gonna look like this. Now, as the income goes up, the tax rate is also gonna go up. So let's do it this way. Uh, I'm gonna make up my own income brackets and my own marginal tax rate. If you wanna find out what is the actual income brackets and the actual tax rate in real life, uh, you can look in the book, you can Google it. It's very easy to find out. So let's do the, uh, a, a fictional uh, progressive tax. So here is the income brackets. And marginal tax rate. And I'm going to say like this. Uh, let's... The first $10,000, we're gonna tax it at a rate of 0%. From 10 to $40,000, we're gonna tax at a rate of 20%. 40 to 100,000, let's tax at a rate of 30%. 100 to 200, 40%. And anything above 200, 50%. Again, I'm making up my own numbers. And I make them up like this so I can easily calculate. Okay, now uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you an income and then ask you, well, how much do you owe in taxes? So let's suppose that your income is gonna be $250,000. Question for you, how much do you owe Uncle Sam? It's not a rhetorical question. Any ideas? Okay. 50, I, I, yeah. 
50% actually is not that bad. It's not that bad. It's not as bad as you think. So let's do it together. We're going to calculate how much we owe Uncle Sam together. Okay. Folks, think of your income like a string that starts at zero, but it doesn't go all the way to infinity because it stops at 250. And on each portion of this string, you're gonna pay taxes at different tax rates, at different marginal tax rates. So on the first $10,000, you're gonna be taxed at a rate of 0%. So that means that on the first $10,000, you owe absolutely nothing in taxes. So the first $10,000 that you make out of that 250, uh, on the first 10,000, you owe nothing in taxes. So the tax rate is 0%, so you owe zero. But then your income goes up to 250. So your income covers this whole bracket here, going from 10,000, to 40,000. On this portion of your income, you have to pay at a rate of 20%. Well, how much is it going from 10,000 to 40,000? That's $30,000 going from 10 to 40, because it's only that portion from 10 to 40K that you got to pay at a rate of 20%. Well, 20% of $30,000 is $6,000. So on that portion of the income, I owe Uncle Sam $6,000. Okay, I'm not done because my income keeps on going. My income goes all the way to 250. So that means that I'm gonna have to pay taxes now going from $40,000 to $100,000. Well, that bracket, I'm gonna to have to cover, pay taxes on the whole thing because my income covers the whole bracket. That's $60,000 going from 40 to 100. And 30% of $60,000 is gonna be $18,000. And I'm not done. I gotta pay taxes going from 100 to 200. That's $100,000 that I have to pay taxes on, going from 100 to 200. Okay, 40% on $100,000, that's $40,000. And now I'm gonna have to pay taxes, well, not from 200 to infinity, that would be unfair, from 200 all the way to 250. That's where my income stops. So from 200 to 250, that's $50,000. And I'm going to pay 50% on $50,000. 50% is $25,000. I add what I have to pay on each portion of the income brackets. And what I'm going to come up with is, let's see, 65, 65, 71, 89. I'm gonna to have to pay $89,000 in taxes. Okay. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> that's how you calculate the income taxes. You gotta go on each bracket, see how much you owe in each portion of the bracket, and then you add everything together and you're gonna come up with a number. And that's how, you, how much you owe. Okay. Now, <clears throat> another thing that is of interest to me is this. Um, what is your marginal tax rate? Imagine that I ask you a question and I say, well, what is your marginal tax rate? In itself, sounds kind of weird for me to say, well, what's your marginal tax rate? Because you, you make $250,000 and different portions of your income are taxed at different marginal tax rate. So, so it's kind of like, 
weird for me to say, well, what is your marginal tax rate? But by convention, economists, accountants, uh, whatever, by convention, they say that your marginal tax rate is the highest marginal tax rate that your income takes you into. And in other words, if somebody says, what is this person's marginal tax rate? You will say it's 50% because this is the highest that their income took, you, uh, took them into. It, it took them into the 50%. It's not that they paid 50% of their income in taxes because uh, that would have been $125,000. So obviously they paid only $89,000, but by convention, if somebody says, if you are asked on a test, what is a person marginal tax rate? You, all you do is you look at what is the highest that their income took them into, and that's gonna be their marginal tax rate. So to give you another example, let's say that uh, you are making um, $41,000, your income is $41,000. Can anybody tell me real fast, if your income is $41,000, what is your marginal tax rate? 30%. Just by looking at the table. 30%. 30%, exactly, 30%. Does it mean that you pay 30% of that $40,000? Of course not. Because if you make $41,000, let's see how much you're going to pay. You're going to pay zero on the first $10,000. Then you're going to have to pay 10 to 40, 20%. And that's $30,000, 20% is $6,000. And then going from 40 to 41, you're going to have to pay 30%. 30% on that $1,000 from 40 to 41 on a thousand dollars, 30% is $300. So you, what you're gonna pay is $6,300. That's how much you owe in taxes, okay? But by convention, uh, your marginal tax rate is 30%. So uh, what would be a more interesting uh, calculation that would tell me a lot more about how much a person is paying in, ta in taxes is not by looking at the marginal tax rate, which is the highest that their income takes them into, but by looking at what is their average tax rate. On average, out of that income that they make, how much do they pay in taxes? How much does it go to Uncle Sam? That would be a number that would be more interesting to me. Well, how do we find, how do we find the average tax rate? And here's how we're gonna find the average tax rate. Imagine folks, imagine that your income is, and I'm picking those numbers because they're easy to work with. Your income is $100,000 and you owe in taxes to Uncle Sam, you owe $25,000 in taxes. On average, how much did you pay in taxes? How much out of your income went to Uncle Sam? A quarter. 25%. A quarter, 25%. Well, how did you get that quarter? Oh, it's the average tax rate is equal to how much you owe in taxes, how much you pay in taxes, divided by your income times 100. So in the case of this person, you would take, to calculate the average ta tax rate, you would take 6,300 divided by $41,000 times 100, and that will give you the average tax rate. In the case before, when we had uh, a person making 250 and they, were, uh, they owed in taxes $89,000, you would take that 89 divided by 250 times 100, and then you find out, well, on average, how much do they pay in taxes, okay? So mar marginal tax rate doesn't, uh, I needed to calculate uh, how much you owe in taxes, uh, but the marginal tax rate, if, if somebody tells me, because you, you hear it a lot when people don't wanna tell you how much they make, 
but they want to imply that they make a lot of money, they will say something like this. Oh, I'm in the highest marginal tax rate. I'm in the highest, which means what? They make pretty good bucks, but it could be, let's say the highest marginal tax rate is here at $200,000. So that's once you get above $200,000, you're in the highest marginal tax rate. Well, somebody making $201,000, certainly they can say, oh, I'm in the highest marginal tax rate. Ooh, you know. But they're paying only $1,000 at a rate of 50%. Now, if somebody's making uh, $10 million, I, I can see where they're saying, well, I'm paying you the 50%, I'm in the 50% bracket, because $9,800,000 out of the $10 million, yeah, they are paid at a rate of 50%, so most of their income is paid at the highest marginal tax rate. But, uh, you know, it, it doesn't really tell me that much. The average tax rate has a lot more meaning to so, uh, uh, by the by, you may see this question on a test. It will give you a table and a marginal tax rate, and they will give you two families making two incomes, and you're going to have to calculate how much one family has to pay in taxes, how much the other family has to pay in taxes, and if uh, once once you calculate how much they pay in taxes, then you can calculate the average tax rate because you take that amount that they have to pay in taxes divided by the income. That is the average tax rate. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's go to the regressive tax. So regressive. And folks, we have in this country, we have a regressive tax. So we have like the sales tax represents a proportional tax. Income tax is a progressive tax. And there's a tax that looks kind of like this, like regressive. Regressive means this, as income goes up, marginal tax rate goes down. So here is income brackets. And here is marginal tax rate. And it would look like this. I don't know of a single country in the world that has an income tax system like this. You know, obviously, you make a ton of money. Whatever you make above $250,000 is not going to be taxed at all. So if you're very, very, you make a lot of money, you all would love a tax like this. But it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. But I told you that we do have it in this country. And uh, if you're working, you're paying it. I am not paying it, but I am special. You, not so much, so you're going to have to pay it. Now, what's this tax that I'm talking about? Social Security and Social Medicare. Social Security. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, why am I not paying it? Uh, because folks, uh, I'm a state employee and we have our own retirement account. And now before I was a state employee and I worked for in the private sector, uh, I paid social security like everybody else. I, I, now, uh, when I retire, uh, they're going to say to me, Otto, you got to pick one because you cannot have them both. Yeah, you contributed to Social Security. Yeah, you contributed to STRS. You can have one of them. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> I'm obviously going to pick which one. I'm going to pick the STRS. I'm going to pick uh, uh, 
<clears throat> the state retirement. I'm not going to pick Social Security because I'll pick whichever is high. Uh, and therefore, since I'm not going to be able to collect Social Security, it makes absolutely no sense for me to contribute to Social Security. All the money that I contributed into Social Security, that's bye-bye. That's my gift to you guys. Okay, I'm never going to see that money again. Okay, so what does Social Security look like? If, and again, the numbers are approximate. I don't work with the exact numbers, but it's about like this. <clears throat> You're taxed on the first hundred and twenty thousand uh, dollars approximately a hundred maybe it's a 122 whatever after that you no longer pay towards social security okay. uh, why do they do it this way and uh, um, there's a reason there's a reason why they do it this way because ultimately what happens is people pay into social security and then they draw some benefits. Uh, those benefits are not that huge. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> approximately the highest that you can collect from social security uh, yearly would be around 38,000 bucks, something like that. So that, that's the highest. That's if you contributed always uh, the maximum. Okay. So what, what, what they do in, with Social Security Administration, what they do is they take all this money in and then they mix it up, this money, and then they redistribute it back when people retire, uh, but they don't redistribute it exactly in the measure that one contributed. Okay, so the people who contributed more, they, they were making higher incomes, uh, they're gonna take away some of the money from them and they're gonna redistribute to the people who did not have high incomes and they contributed obviously less. So somebody making 120 throughout their life's span or working in the span, uh, they're gonna contribute more than somebody making $40,000 throughout their lifespan, you know, so, but they're gonna take some of the money from here and they're gonna put it there and blah, 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 okay. Uh, the reason they, uh, they stop this contribution at 120 or whatever the amount is, why, why don't they do something like zero to infinity? Uh, zero to infinity, six and a half percent. Because then they would take humongous amounts of money from very, very rich individuals and redistribute all that to other people. Uh, in, in other words, you would end up with somebody like Bill Gates paying everybody else's social security. And the idea is that it's not Bill Gates's job to pay your social security, okay? So it, that's, that's the main reason. Now, <clears throat> the thing is, um, can you, um, Well, I was going to say about Social Security. Uh, what is the, any idea what the retirement age is for Social Security for just regular, any, any of you? 67, 65? Yeah, 67, you're right, 67. Uh, you can go as low as 62, but obviously if you go lower, what are you going to do? You're going to take less in retirement throughout your life. Okay, so if oh, you collect penalty. 67, you get 100% of your benefits. At 62, you're going to get less money. Okay, you can delay your retirement until 70 and a half, something like that, and then you're going to get more in benefits. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the uh, Social Security Administration actually doesn't care whether you uh, retire early, 
right on time at 67 or you delay it till 70 and a half. Uh, they don't care uh, because on average, uh, the amount that they pay out uh, is about the same. In other words, if you retire at 62, you're gonna collect for quite a few more years, but you're gonna collect a smaller amount. You retire at 67, you're gonna collect uh, at uh, 71, you're gonna collect for fewer years, but you're gonna collect a bigger amount. So, so overall, it comes out to about the same. Um, okay, so, and you know, the decision on whether you should retire at 67 or at 62 or at 70 and a half or what, you know, uh, that depends on other things such as how long you plan on living. Because yeah. if I know things don't look too good, I'm gonna take it as soon as I can, you know. <clears throat> All right, so uh, this is an example of uh, a regressive tax. And now we kind of understand how come, how come it stops at a certain amount because it would be kind of unfair to have a few people paying everybody else's uh, social security. Uh, now, there are people who are saying, oh, I'm not gonna be able to collect social security. And that's nonsense. Uh, everybody is gonna be able to collect social security because there are some easy ways to get out of it. One way is to uh, raise a little bit here the, uh, the, the marginal tax rate. I don't think that's gonna happen. Much, much simpler would be to raise here this amount instead of just the first 100,000 or 120, why not make it the first $250,000 would be taxed. Certainly that will get a little bit more money in. Uh, another way that they can also solve the social security uh, problem is to raise the retirement age, okay? So uh, you, they can say, well, you can retire with full benefits only if you are 95 years or older. And then we're only gonna have five people around and there's gonna be plenty of money for those five lucky individuals. So uh, they, they're gonna be able to, to fix social security. They're gonna be able to raise money. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Some problems. And now you've seen, you've seen proportional, you've seen progressive and you've seen regressive. Uh, let me give you a problem. Two families, family A makes $40,000 and they pay $10,000 in taxes and family B makes $80,000 and they pay $15,000 in taxes. I'm asking you what type of an income tax system we have in this country where family A makes 40 and they pay $10,000 in taxes, family B makes 80 and they pay $15,000 in taxes. Progressive? Marginal? Well, what type of an income tax? So it's either progressive, proportional, or regressive. Progressive. Progressive. Okay, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. If, if we had a proportional income system, and family A making $40,000, they pay $10,000 in taxes. Then this family making $80,000, how much would they pay in taxes if it was proportional? 10K. Proportional means everybody pays the same rate, not the same amount, uh -huh. the same rate. 
So how much would these guys pay if it was proportional? 20,000. 20K? 20K, exactly, yeah. 20K. If 40 pays 10 or a quarter, then 80 is gonna pay 20. Do you see that, folks? So it's a regressive tax. So it's a regressive tax. It means that as income went up, the tax rate went down. For 40, you pay 10,000. For 80, you should, if it was proportional, you should have paid 20,000. But that means that since they are paying only 15,000, that means that as income went up from 40 on up, the marginal tax rate did not stay the same, but it went down because if it was proportional, it, the income goes from 40 to 80, the taxes go from 10 to 20. So it means that the marginal tax rate went down as income went up. Okay. Now, with a problem like this, with a problem like this, the easiest way to do it is, let me, let me show you the easiest way to do it. Because when the numbers are like this, it's rather easy to see. Oh, uh, I, I, I give you one income, one tax, and then I double the income. And then if, if I had doubled the tax, if I had said here, uh, when income is 80, they pay $20,000, then you'd say, oh, it's proportional. If I had said, when they make, when you make 40, you pay 10, when you make 80, you pay 25, then what would you say then? Then you say, oh, it's progressive because it must have gone up because it's higher than proportion, okay? But it's very easy to see that when the numbers are very easy like this. I, I double the income and then you have to look at what has happened to the amount that they have to pay in taxes. Is it double, more than double, or less than double? Because if, if, if it's double, then you have proportional. If it's more than double, you have progressive. If it's less, less than double, then you have regressive. So how would you do those type of problems when it's a little bit uglier numbers? For example, like this. Okay, now, now you cannot say, well, you know, th this one, this went this much up, and, you know, it's tougher. Just calculate how much is this person paying, this family paying on average, and what happens to the average for this family? And if the average goes up, it's gonna be progressive. If the average stays the same, it's gonna be proportional. And if the average goes down, it's gonna be regressive. So. I would do the first one, I would do the average for uh, the first family. So you do 10,000, I don't have a calculator with me. Uh, I don't think you meant 10, to, but you made it proportional. It turns out to be 31% for both. You kidding me? Uh, no. <laughs> wow. Okay, it's proportional, amazing. I mean, I, I made up the numbers right now. Wow, I'm, I'm good. I, I didn't want to make a proportion, so. So now it's going to be regressive because the average goes down, right? Yeah, now. By 1%. Yeah. Okay. yeah. But you get the idea. So, so you calculate and you see if the average, if the, as the income goes up, if the average goes up, then it's pro progressive. If the average goes down, and then it's regressive. And if it stays the same, then it's proportional. <clears throat> okay. Uh, are you comfortable with this? Okay, good. So, uh, so for example, let me let me give you an example. One more example, and I'm done. Here is the income, 
And here's the marginal tax rate. Uh, what would you rather want to make? Uh, $40,000 or $41,000? $40,000 because you pay no, no taxes. Right, you pay no taxes, so you get to keep $40,000. But let's think about it. If you make $41,000, how much money you're gonna pay in taxes and how much you get to keep? So you pay 10% on $1,000? Is that the math we're gonna do? Okay, so you're actually making more than, so okay, you keep more at 41, okay. Yeah, so you wanna make $41,000 because then you pay only $100 in taxes, 10% on only that $1,000, and you're gonna to get to keep $900. So you're better off. If you make 40, you get to keep 40. If you make 41, you're gonna to get to keep 40,900. 40, <clears throat> so, and let's calculate just for the sake of calculating. Uh, so let me ask you, if uh, you make $41,000, what's your marginal tax rate? Oh. Marginal tax rate. It's your 10%. 10%, exactly. And let's calculate now the average tax rate that you pay. Well, how do you do that? The average tax rate... is gonna be equal to 100 bucks, the amount that you pay, divided by $41,000 times 100. So let's see, how much is 0.1 divided by 41 times 100? It's a, a, four, a fourth of 1%. Yeah, tiny, 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 tiny percent, yeah. Okay. Could you comment on the similarity of the Ponzi scheme with Social Security? I always hear that, but I'm not certain of all the similarities. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't see it as a Ponzi scheme. I, uh, I, I really don't. I, I, because you will collect it. You will collect it. Yeah, but you have an increased population, so the number of workers per person getting benefit keeps going more towards one. I think when they started out, it was like at least four. Well, no, I, I understand. I mean, with Social Security, until a few years back, there was a surplus. They were taking more money in than it was going out. So the people who were retiring were not retiring in, in such amounts so that the, the money going to them was less uh, than the money going into Social Security. So there was a surplus and the government was able to, uh, to borrow all that money because what's Social Security gonna, administration gonna do with that money? They, they gotta do something with that money and what they do is they, they lend it to the government for government bonds, which would pay interest. Obviously you want that money to earn some interest. You, you lend it to somebody, you don't lend it for free. Now it's, it's true that now they are actually having a deficit. More money is going out than it's coming in. But like I said, <clears throat> it's not unfixable. They can, they can do all kinds of stuff. Raise the marginal tax rate, which probably not gonna happen, but raise the cap, how much? Yeah, reduce uh, the amount of benefits going out, yeah, per person. Yeah, I, I don't think that the amount of benefits is gonna, I think that what's gonna happen is, it, remember, it's not that much in benefits as it is. Right, that's true. 
But there's nothing else either for most people. Yeah, I mean, if, if you Google uh, the average uh, monthly benefit from Social Security for the average person, so on average, we're not taking the case of this or the average, is about 1400 bucks. Uh, now, for living on $1,400 a month, uh, if that's your only uh, uh, benefit that you have, then uh, it's gonna be pretty tough. Yeah, and that's the future for a lot of people. So uh, I have a question. Yeah. Why doesn't the trust fund for Social Security just reevaluate the interest rates on the bonds that they issue from the federal government? I mean, it wouldn't solve the problem, but wouldn't it help shrink the deficit? Well, no, they, I mean, they, they, they are getting what they are getting, whatever, whatever the at different periods of time, the government will issue bonds at different rates. And so Social Security buys whatever the rates are at that particular time. So, so you cannot pick and choose. You, you get what, what you, whatever you are getting. Uh, I, I, I would not, I have no fears that, that, I mean, I don't care because I'm not going to collect social security. So it's not my business. Uh, <laughs> well, CalPERS is doing some pretty bad investments. <laughs> but, uh, you, you will collect it. You will collect it because there are ways of getting around it. And that's one way is to raise the cap. Uh, there are other ways that have been proposed. I mean, raise the, the retirement age, uh, make it um, means tested. Means tested means that you collect Social Security oh. yeah, only if you have earned less than this, you know. And so if you are a multimillionaire, you know, you know, even though you paid into Social Security, they may not pay you Social Security or something like that. You know, so there are many ways of... Uh, uh, you know, I'm not in favor of this or in favor of that. I'm not uh, uh, advocating anything here. Uh, I'm just saying that, uh, yeah, I, I, I would not be fearful of that. Okay, so let's confuse the issue even more. So yes. the government has Social Security, right? And CalPERS in California. So uh, what do they call that?